I'm Mari with Mari Sells and thanks for hanging with me. So today I wanted to share with you all my plans for the So Frugal 22. So Frugal 22 is actually the brainchild of Sam from Frugalissima and Ruin from the Yorkshire So Girl. So, and as always, I'm going to link to everyone and everything that I mentioned down in the description box below so that way you can find that information very easily. So this challenge was actually called Frugal Frocks in the past and they've changed it up a bit so that they could include more garment types. But in the past, you made a dress using a free pattern that was available and stash fabric. And then you posted your dress and, you know, just have fun using up the stuff that you already have and minimizing the cost to you. So this year, what they've done is they've expanded it so that it's any garment. So you can sew any garment this year using a free pattern. Now, when we're talking about free patterns, it has to be a pattern that is readily available. Um, so we're looking at free PDF patterns. If it's in a book, that really doesn't count as free because you had to purchase the book or someone had to purchase the book for you. And so others who are looking for it won't necessarily, it may not be free to them, right? You have to use your stash fabric. So there's a third rule. And the fourth rule is you have to make it in March and post it on March 31st using the hashtag SoFrugal22. There are actually so many people getting involved in SoFrugal22 that there are two people posting videos with free pattern ideas and fabrics throughout the month. So after you watch this video, make sure that you run over to Renata over at the Twilight Stitcher and watch her video as well, which is going live today. And again, you can catch it all in the description box below. So let's talk about some of the patterns that I was looking at and why. So let's start with the why. You all, this month is insanely busy for me. And I do have such little sewing time for garments. And with that in mind, I was actually thinking about what pieces I can add into my closet that would be quick to kind of whip up, but they could go with a lot of different things. And so I decided that I wanted to focus in on two different types of tops with two very different looks. The peasant top, as well as the bodysuit. The peasant top, I was thinking, is just so versatile. I can throw it on with jeans or I can throw it on with my work pants and go to work and no one's gonna bat an eye and think that I'm being inappropriate in any way. The bodysuit is mostly for a fun weekend, after work type of outfit um, because I, I do want something that feels a little sassier. You know, this feels like I'm not uh, tied up prim and proper throughout the entire day. <laughs> Now let's get into the actual patterns that I found. So for both of these garments, I chose two different patterns. And actually, I chose one pattern and one drafting video because not everyone likes to tape together PDFs, and I get that. Sometimes I'm like that as well. Well, most of the time, I'm like that. <laughs> so the first pattern for the peasant dress, I actually found over at thefabricstore.com, and that is this linen peasant blouse. Now, this blouse I thought was really sweet because it has light gathering around the neckline, all the way around the neckline. It has that little V keyhole here, and then it also has the strap so that you can tie them in the front. And what I like about this one is that it actually looks like I could possibly wear it back to front as well. So just kind of turn it around for a bit of a different look. So I thought that that was a really cute option. It's nice and flowy. Um, and you don't need to use linen to make that top. <laughs> now, if you're not one to download a PDF and tape it all together, definitely check out Thoughtful Creativity's Peasant Top right over here, which is actually pretty similar. The main differences that I see here is that the keyhole opening is a bit more rounded, but it still has that binding that goes around the neckline that you can tie, the nice gathers all the way around the garment, and it's got nice volume. But this one has shorter grown-on sleeves as opposed to the longer sleeves with a binding 
in the actual pattern. Now I haven't made either of these tops, so I'm not sure which one I'm going to end up going with, but honestly I feel like either would be a winner. Now let's get into some of the fabric choices. So I've gone through my stash and I've pulled out some suitable fabrics that could be used for the peasant tops. And actually what's fun is that this peasant top can be made up in either a woven fabric or a knit fabric, depending on how fancy you wanna get with it, right? So I was thinking this would be a really fun way to make a peasant top. Um, in some of the flowy fabrics, use a binding in one of the different colors. Um, I think this crepe would actually be really phenomenal. Going along with that, I also have these blues here, and these are all wovens, and these look like linen cotton type of blends, and I think that would be really beautiful too, especially these two. I think they'd go really well with the color blocking, especially the way they had it styled in the fabric store picture. So I thought that these would be really good options. But don't forget that you could also make this top using a knit, which I think would be a really comfy, comfy garment. So I pulled out this pink right here, and it's just, you all, it is just a really nice, this feels like a cotton jersey with some stretch in it, and it has some decent stretch in all directions. Um, I think that would just be a really easy to wear top. And you all, I just noticed this one. So going back to the wovens, um, one of the things that you'll see oftentimes are people using border prints on peasant tops because they're pretty simple shapes and they really highlight a border print very beautifully. And so I have this in my stash and I think this would actually be a really gorgeous peasant top. What do you think? When it comes to peasant tops, do you like the idea of a border print or do you like the idea of more kind of solid colors with a little bit of contrast around the neckline. Let me know. Now let's talk about bodysuits. So first let's talk about the printed pattern, which is this um, Avon's bodysuit with this really amazing cutout by Mood. Now Mood offers a bunch of free patterns in their Mood Society. And again, you all, it's all linked in the description box below, but what I really liked about this one was that I, I felt like it was a little bit, it was a little saucy, you know? It has that fun cutout, a turtleneck, it has one long sleeve, and it has snaps. So this one does fasten in the back with hook and eyes around that neck. So that way you could get in and out of that neckline. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it was really fun. The other bodysuit that I found was by Dammy Dimensions, who's also here on YouTube. Now she does a tutorial on how to draft a bodysuit pattern that you can use to, you know, kind of create other looks from. Now the, <laughs> the major difference with the Dammy Dimensions one is she doesn't show you how to sew it together. So if you're a novice person or if you're just someone who likes to have the instructions, definitely go with the Mood Society one because they have all of the instructions laid out for you. However, if you feel confident that you could just use your self-created pattern and serge it on together and throw it on, Power to you, go for it. <laughs> the one thing that I would know is that make sure that you have snaps to add on to the bottom crotch area so that way you can get in and out of the actual bodysuit, especially if you're not gonna have a really wide neckline, like a swimsuit type of neckline where you could just pull it up. Yeah, if you're not gonna have that, make sure you have the snaps. And actually, just make sure that you have snaps anyways because what if you have to go to the bathroom? put the snaps in. And if you like these tips and suggestions, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe so that way you can keep getting some more. Let's talk fabric because I feel like fabric for the bodysuit is definitely going to be a bit trickier. So let's get into it. You definitely want to use something that is going to have some serious stretch. So take a look at your knits, your poly spandex, your nylon spandexes, things like that. You can use a cotton spandex, but just keep in mind that you're gonna need something that's gonna have really good recovery. Um, for example, 
when you are stretching it, you want it to kind of like snap back without looking all stretched out. Definitely take a look for a fabric in your stash that is like that. Also, make sure that your fabric has four-way stretch. I think in the, um, in the UK, they call it two-way stretch, but you want your fabric to stretch both this way and you want it to stretch in this direction. And sometimes fabric only stretch in one direction and what's going to happen is if it's not stretchy both vertically and horizontally, you're going to give yourself a wedgie. And nobody likes to pick bodysuits out of their butt all day long. I'm sorry. So make sure that you have decent four-way stretch. I would even go as far to say make sure that you have 50% four-way stretch on your knit. And actually, now that I'm thinking about fabrics in my stash, I'm thinking that I could either use some black nylon spandex or I could use this pink one that I had pulled out for the peasant top. I mean, I think it would tone down the sauciness of that cutout, but still look really kind of cute put to, and put together. I, oh, I, I think I'm going to go with in this direction, definitely, for the bodysuit. So we just covered two very different garments. Let me know which one was your favorite. I will definitely be making one of them up, maybe maybe two of them this month, honestly, and posting them on March 31st using the hashtag SoFrugal22. And I hope that you really do join in on over on Instagram in the challenge and win some amazing prizes. If you enjoyed this video, check out my fabric haul over here where I went through a bunch of fabrics that were gifted to me. Tons and tons of fabrics, actually. And you all, until next time, I sincerely hope that you find joy and have a wonderful day. Okay.